So it is in between and some part of the country, it must be evening time. If you look into uh, some eastern part, now still in Delhi, it is, we can say in transition between afternoon and evening. So uh, I will start uh, with this a uh, very good uh, evening to all of you. Uh, today, you know, uh, this is the, today we are going to discuss on the topic sustainability and sustainable development. When uh, we are studying uh, this course, postgraduate diploma in sustainability science, if you look into the course framework, you must have seen that the first course is on uh, that is MHD 011 is sustainability science. And we're taking the first session of this course one of block one that talks about introduction to sustainable development. If you look into the blog, you will find out different units that talks about the concept of sustainability and sustainable development. And I assume that most of uh, you must have uh, looked into a quick uh, contents, quick review on that uh, study materials. I know that uh, uh, some of you uh, must not be having hard copy, which they have opted hard copy, but uh, still, we have given you an option uh, to utilize. Uh, uh, do joint, uh, I mean, in the um, uh, recent, I mean, the, the second batch, please uh, meet yourself. I don't have any help here. That's why I'm doing myself. As you know, we are conducting the session on Saturday and Sunday. So, anyway, so in that, what I'm going to say is that, uh, you know, uh, the concept of this sustainability and sustainable development, though uh, the basic concept is uh, same, but if you look into from different angle uh, and uh, uh, the meaning of uh, this very dynamic and a very, um, I mean, uh, publication, the uh, number of progress is happening every month, every year, because this is one of the, um, uh, sorry, important area where a number of um, stakeholders, including academic policy maker, planners nowadays, uh, working uh, to find out and uh, I mean, uh, to find out an alternative or, uh, for a better planet. So as a student uh, of sustainability science, first word uh, we need to understand is the how the word sustainability uh, the concept of sustainability uh, and the idea of sustainability uh, was evolved and uh, and, and how uh, the word sustainable development was used as a standard term to uh, reflect the meaning of uh, achieving sustainability so with this in my mind and uh, uh, buying session we are taking an opportunity so, uh, uh, so uh, the point is that so uh, there was some you know um, uh, problem uh, from other side of the participant, and you uh, looking into uh, that. Let us uh, let us have a quick look. Today, uh, this presentation may be somewhat uh, um, uh, long, uh, longer than as well. It may be uh, presentation may be more than one hour because I'm trying to bring the basic concept together in a session. Okay. So let us uh, quick look. Uh, slide is not moving. Okay. So the first term in this session, you will understand the first term you have seen is sustainability, and uh, the other term is sustainable development. Uh, when you see uh, the term sustainability, uh, if you look into the dictionary meaning, and if you look into the uh, basic, uh, uh, I mean, the logic behind 
at this particular time, you will easily find out answer yourself. Sustainability, ability to sustain, means and to sustain in longer time or to manage in longer term. So it can be, uh, the meaning the term can be used in different perspective. But if you look into the present era of uh, the human civilization, what we are uh, every day and what uh, we have to look for the future generation to survive yourself, ourselves and to maintain uh, uh, this biosphere, uh, we have to look those uh, this particular term from a holistic approach. So let us have a quick look into how this term was evolved. So that can be look into the growth of human civilization. With the growth of human civilization, the sustainability term is also, I mean, uh, evolved, right? Then it can be look into when you look into that uh, sustainability of a system of resources of everything what people are looking, then you will find out that industrial revolution is the first limitation we have realized, the human have realized uh, to look into sustainability of our system. <clears throat> then this can also be look into the pressure of population and to the resources because the human civilization exists because of the natural resources. So we until it depend on the natural resources, we used to have a harmonious relation between this environment that, that you can take as a natural resources and with the human as a population, right? Uh, then uh, we need to look into, uh, when you look into the modern way of understanding the term sustainability, you need to understand how the roots of utilize, using the term sustainability can be looked into which is reported or which is, I mean, uh, uh, used by different authors, different scientists, different policy makers and planners. So that perspective we need to look into. And then, you know, that can be reflected in, into how this the terminology of sustainability and sustainable at last in sustainable deployment uh, has come up uh, you will find out uh, uh, in this particular, in different reports in the book published by different authors or uh, uh, different, uh, I mean, uh, academic chain. Okay, I have some, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, then, uh, then, uh, so looking from that growth of human civilization, you know, uh, age, we know that human civilization was started uh, from uh, the Stone Age, we can say from Stone Age, whatever we are learning from the basics of uh, different epoch or different stages of human civilization, we will find out that we will start it uh, from, uh, specifically from uh, Stone Age, uh, to the modern age, the post-industrial age. So most of those authors who are working in this particular area, uh, they divide the human epochs, growth of human civilization into the uh, uh, batch of, uh, into uh, uh, three basic epochs. Based on in a, uh, using how those civilization, those human, our human, our forefather used the energy. If you look into the nature human relationship, what type of resources we are using, we are depending is to get energy. And based on the way we are trying the energy, the epoch was identified by different authors at Neolithic age. You know, if you look into Neolithic age, what we learn is that it is basically based on the unmodified passive use of solar energy in that time. We do not involve in production process of energy what type of, we the human use was the available resources. It may be plant or animal, which was just there. Even we did not process it, we eat it. Then it is followed by, if you look into that second epoch, what they reported is that they reported means uh, they uh, tag it is in an academic in, um, uh, framework is agrarian epoch. When we were a nomad, then we were trying to settle ourselves and trying to control the resources production and we were involved in the active use of solar energy 
and you modify the passive use of solar energy. Then come into the industrial epoch. When agrarian epoch have a treatance, have a treat to our survival because of the scarcity of resources, because of the scarcity of our food, because of scarcity of everything we depend on, then come now with the advancement of our knowledge, advancement of human brand, and then we uh, use this industrial, uh, we have the industrial epoch that is basically based on the use of fossil energy resource. In this slide, what it shows is what if uh, uh, the stages, the epoch, one epoch to another is basically based on the flow of energy. And because of that flow of energy, our epoch has changed. And that is because of the advancement of our knowledge. And that was basically depend on uh, the uh, different social and metabolic regime. So let us, quick, uh, let us have a quick look into how it was happened, right? So if you look into hunter in neurotic as that is a, 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 take an example, hunter get a society. If you look into hunter get a society, how their system was exist, as I mentioned you that the nature human relationship, the human civilization was entirely depend on the nature of the resources and why we depend on uh, natural resources for energy for, to survive, to run our system, to survive ourselves, that is to get energy. So the energy system of the undergatherer was, as I mentioned, was based on a passive, unmodified use of solar energy in the form of organic material. It's, I don't think so. I need another I mean, definition to define organic material. If, uh, it is uh, most of you must have known. So this society, particular that hunter-gatherer society, barely, they are very small clan organization. They have growth, they have planned they move from one place to another. They intervene or they take part in the process of resource flow, in the process of resource flow, passively, don't, don't, they don't bother about uh, potential resources, they don't bother about the availability of their resources. They don't bother about the larger energy stock, whether it is available or not, because it was very, uh, plenty of resources was there. So that uses, because in that time, population is also very less and that their is, uh, use of resources for energy did not modify the natural energy flows in a highly substantial, uh, not in a uh, substantial way. So if you look into the technical progress during that hunter-gatherer society, you will find that the sense of energetic efficiency improvement was not relevant with that society. And you will find in that study, in the particular epoch, you will not find now that uh, the growth of their cultural development, you will not found not much dynamic, not much difference. That it was very slow. Then comes to agrarian uh, solar energy system, because then the human, when they travel from one uh, region to another for their food, then the, uh, and then they think of, okay, there is plenty of uh, resources. Why don't we settle in a place? When they started to settle in a place, then they think of, okay, we have limited space. We have to depend because they are able to understand when you settle that they are able to understand the limitation of accessing, reaching that particular resources. That's why they started agriculture system. So the agrarian solar energy system was based on the three form of energy. First, they are the metabolic energy, their food they are getting. The mechanical energy, the energy they use by using cattle, by using wind energy, other form of mechanical form of energy to run their system, to follow the agriculture and other practices. The others, the calorific energy, you know, uh, the uh, calorific which they are getting from the forest that basically that depend from, from the forest, they use wood and the other forest product for eating them, cooking the food, and for the other activities and constructing their houses. So trees are, these are three basic, I mean, uh, um, energy system that entirely depend on by the agricultural, agrarian solar energy system. All this form of energy is, it is, of course, it is organic material, 
dependent. When you were settled in a, uh, uh, in a place, you have limited boundary, uh, limited access in the sense that they have their own, they know their own limitation and a product of those wood resources, product of those agriculture, the practices that uh, they follow, the culture they follow, uh, they follow the, as we call agriculture, on the available of land and, uh, 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 and uh, uh, what losses in the map? Okay, okay, on any. Anyway. So available to, uh, available of uh, uh, land and a quality of land. So they predominantly, I mean, uh, collected. They were predominantly collected and distributed locally because of that close environment. Because from agriculture, you will find out the close environment situation. Okay. And this society actively managed the solar energy flows to increase the available energy because they started. To be to be a part in the process of extracting the energy, and basically by clearing the forest and intensive use of the remaining forest, this is how we are enter into destructing our environment. Right. So agrarian system, agrarian system. You started to talk about. Uh, importance of available land quality and others. So to sustain, you know, population is increasing and uh, you are depending on the, uh, in your boundary of resources, which are easily accessible to you, you cut the forest to grow the, to follow the culture of agri, uh, agricultural product means agriculture, to follow the agriculture. So this agrarian solar energyism had to operate, operate within the regeneration capacity of the ecological system. However, agrarian, uh, however, agrarian ecological, uh, however, agrarian society always had a tendency to push their ecological limits because when population is increasing, though they know that your production of agriculture your production of forest, depending on the quality and uh, uh, qu uh, quality of soil, quantity of available land, but due to the pressure of population, you will always try to, I mean, cross the boundary of uh, this eco regeneration capacity of the nature. So despite attempts to organize some form of sustainable users, they ended up in a deep energy, ecological, economic, and social crisis. That's why they started to talk about alternative they talk about a sustain it's their system. It is how uh, I just want uh, that I mentioned in the introductory introduction that that uh, the concept of sustainability involved. It is as all as human civilization, right? Then in that way to find an alternative to meet the, uh, their energy dem demand, we have shifted to industrial revolution. I have a quick look into, uh, in, a, in a quick look, I will not explain uh, and uh, uh, details about this different, but we have, will have different uh, class, uh, which is specifically, we'll talk, we'll specifically talk on uh, this different epoch. Okay. So in industrial, uh, then come the industrial uh, epoch, where the exploitation and use of fossil fuels, in particularly hard coal, made it possible to overcome the limitation of agrarian solar energy system and its energy crisis made industrial revolution possible. Right. So uh, the advent of the age of fossil fuels released human from their dependence on organic materials from the threats of between heat, food, and raw material. So what if you look into that fossil fuels, you will find out that are a one-time gift that lifted us up from subsistence agriculture. Because in subsistence agriculture, I told you uh, that it is because the issues started with the increasing population, decreasing environment and quality, means quality of your soil, and in the limited area of space. And human don't like, have do not have an intention to act, I mean, uh, 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 follow that uh, that um, the, that uh, the way their lifestyle used to be in hunter gatherer, right? So in that way, to find an alternative to, to survive their um, system, and uh, ad, uh, with advance of their human knowledge, we we'll explore that um, what are the alternative and found that fossil fuels, the terrain 
subterranean prakak of the forest has become one of the alternative so if you look into that that sustainability is directly related to the way we are using the energy right so and some of you will find out at the end of the 20th century that is uh, 20th century you will find the world economy is based on fossil fuel that's we're talking about 70s 80s and 90s and the world is experiencing an ecological crisis because of the negative external effects caused by the enormous energy surplus of fossil fuel right so the metabolic energy consumption that is the per capita consumption of energy has increased in human society in that way see you will see from 1 to 10 to 20 gigajoule which we used to in hunter gatherer society to 220 to 350 gigajoule industrial society this is how our way of i mean culture from culture of agriculture to industrial it is how our way of per capita consumption energy is increased the end of the if so to understand uh, this concept of how sustainability come into uh, the term sustainability evolved with the human history I let us have a quick look into one of the example uh, by giving looking into European context. the reason why we are looking into European context the reason behind and that is if you look into the world in different across the world find out this uh, western part especially Europe uh, you will see uh, they have um, their uh, they are the place, the center of industrial evolves. And you will find out the issues, environmental issues, the issues of uh, this crisis, ecological crisis, economic crisis that was happened since long, uh, that was happened 100 years back. So let us have a quick look into how their system, uh, uh, in that system, the sustainability was evolved. The term sustainability, concept of sustainability was evolved. In the end of 10th century in Europe, that is 950 uh, to 1300 uh, the, uh, increase agricultural outputs is increased with the medical cultivation uh, of inaccessible areas because they have occupied more forest uh, to product uh, have more agricultural production <laughs> sorry the forests were clear systematically and the land was used intensively for agriculture and stock farm. Then, then the success of agrarian solar energy civilization of Central Europe was entirely expressed in the construction of medieval cathedral. So you will find out uh, that they have constructed big, big cathedral uh, by extracting more wood from the forest. If you follow that, what will come, you know, resource that crunch will be here. It may be local context. When human don't like to move on our territory, or automatically the, uh, uh, the regenerating capacity of nature will be lower than uh, your uh, extraction, uh, that uh, percentage of extraction, quantity of extraction. So in 14th century, what happened in that European country, the near collapse of the agrarian solar energy system was happened due to the economic success of agriculture followed by population increase. There is economic success of agriculture in one side. Another side, because of that success, you will find out population is increased. Right? And the solar energy system exceeded its energetic boundaries because it was on agricultural land and the forest. That's what we're talking about. Population is increasing. So you have success of economic success of agriculture, but when your population is increasing and you have limited the, the, the natural area where you can follow your agriculture and limited forest area where you're depending. So in that way, depleted. So this process was accelerated when the medieval worm it gradually came to an end, followed by a period called the Little Ice Age. About the beginning of the 14th century, population growth. Population is growing, but growing demand for timber. When your population increasing, and with advancement of human knowledge, you look at 
uh, in the uh, what they said, they have constructed a number of large, large cathedral. So you demand, I mean, people will, when you have plenty of resources in their time, they do not look into the future. Uh, so they will start uh, when, uh, with the increase of population, they will start to construct more and more cathedral type of houses. So that automatically have direct impact on the resources that you find. Now, in the 14th century, the agrarian solar energy system in Central Europe exceeded the carrying capacity of natural forest system because you entirely depend on that because of your population high, increase in population. So this decline, imminent collapse of the agrarian solar energy system brought forth a new development, the protection of the environment, the energy resource against exploitation. It has become a central duty of regional institution. Institution exists. How to manage those system? You will find out those institution in traditional way in India also. But here, that they have been streamlined in a better way in the time. In the middle of 14th century, local government, local government uh, recognized that they had to protect the community. So with this, to avoid overuse of natural resources. That is the concept of Almendi, like we have common pool resources India, CPR system resources India, Pansai land resources India, community grazing uh, I mean, uh, uh, ground in India. In that way, they also have Almendi system that was widespread in the countryside in many parts of Europe, in particular the German Holy Roman, in Roman Empire. So if you look into its origin, its origin was in 10th century. That shows, as I mentioned, this is a public ownership uh, ownership uh, way of um, uh, honoring uh, ownership of land. So, Almendi, the Almendi economy, the forest was the most important area for environmental use. This economy does become an important pillar of medieval society. This medieval public ownership economy is the first sustainable system because, I know, when in the start of the beginning, even in India also, if you look into Pansaiti Ras system and uh, uh, Ban Pansai system and, uh, and, uh, the common grazing ground, forest grazing ground, you'll find it was maintained by the government. A very better way, a very beautiful way. But you know, that also have negative impact later on. So the legal system on Almendic bad ecological boundaries of the local sustainable system when bridge at the of the industrial. As you know, you must have uh, known uh, if some economic person known that Ardin's the resource degradation concept, SD of commons. So when you have the common ownership common, sometimes and the human uh, I mean, negligence of that. Okay, this uh, I can access if you want access uh, without any option. That makes a degradation of your system. That's why in that way the legal system of Almendi do not prevent ecological. Problem. So the Prussian land reform in 1811, then because of that uh, limitation in Almendi, uh, legal system of Almendi, in 1811, the transfer control over land from the local community to the responsibility of single individual companies. How it comes to sustain the system? The point is that concept of sustainability evolved in this process, right? In this way, the sustainability emerges. So after the legal end of the Almendi, the term sustainability emerges against the background of the double revolution of industrialization based on the uh, fossil fuels and the age of enlightenment. We, let us have a quick look into that, uh, what is the era of fossil fuel age and age of enlightenment. Okay. In the first revolution, that is age of fossil fuel, at the end of the 18th century, you will find out the agrarian solar energy, as I mentioned, is that uh, we need to, we are finding out the alternative to the agrarian way of that in uh, that uh, to map, we are trying to find out that. And in that way, you will find out in 18 and 19 early century of uh, in Europe, forest ocean dramatically. Then when the quality of the product and quant and then you have limited resources automatically, there is steady strong and strong rising price of that product. 
So in the middle of 18th century, this system was heading for a breakdown. So then if the system is going to background, um, breakdown, we will find out that age, we, uh, we know that the production or dependent is limited to your uh, spell, I mean, uh, close boundary or limited land area that automatically the shortage of wood in particular in dynamic consumption. Because if you look into the way of consumption, you will find out consumption is have more demand in the center of economy that is especially in the developing, developed area, in centers and cities that directly uh, and with that, the energy and ecological crisis started. So the new alignment of forest management could not satisfy the rapidly growing demand for energy. This was only possible by the extensive exploitation of coal. Because the human knowledge is advancing, we try to find an alternative. At last, we find out, okay, there is a product. Which can we use? We can use that very intensive I mean, effective way. What is that? That is subterranean product of forest, that is quail. And I will not go into detail about the quail production, all that thing, but at first in Britain, that had suffered most of the energy shortage and the high energy prices in the 18th century, a transformation process accelerated from the solar energy system to the fossil energy system. Up to agriculture, agrarian system, uh, we will entirely depend on Agriculture, energy, uh, solar, uh, that direct solar energy system. Now we have explored that there is another alternative, which, which that is support to sustain our system, to run our society. What is that? That is fossil. That is fossil energy system. So with this new dynamic industrial energy system, which replaced the agrarian solar energy system, which is inherent energy shortage produces a permanent energy surplus. Point no, to be noted, in that time, India, country like India must not have, must not have the knowledge of having such kind of energy. But in some part of the world, they have surplus energy. They enjoy that, that surplus energy. That is the problem. This high energy density of coil meant that it was cost effective to transport the energy feedstock to those regions where the energy was most needed. So in further than after coil, we have the oil age, the another revolution. So fossil energy resources promoted economic development while making the economic growth independent of agrarian solar energy supply and uh, this growing industrial society uses subterranean forest I, from millions of years ago and rapidly introduced them into the economic cycle. In does the second, since the second half of 20th century, for the first time in the human history, abundant energy is available, at least in industrial countries. As I mentioned you that, there was few pockets of areas of the world. And uh, hence per capita consumption. Uh, rose rapidly for some decades in some part. As today we are blaming to the developed country that part, American, European part in the continent of America. This inexpensive, inexpensive energy penetrated all social and production areas, sends them fundamentally. So they consume high energy and Let me give you. Okay, so I will do that. Okay, Kartika, I, uh, I will do that. We'll discuss later on. Okay. So this is how is this is how in this three major epoch the concept of sustainability come up. As I mentioned that sustainability, the term, the concept of sustainability is not new. It is as all age human civilization. So it is directly related to energy, right? So let us have a quick look into uh, the modern way of sustainable, understanding the sustainability. So if you look in that, you'll find out what the roots, what are the roots of sustainability? Biological current capacity roots, resource environment root, the biosphere root, critique of technology root, 
and the no growth slow growth route in the eco development route right ecological caring capacity route the term itself indicates that you know the ecologists before in the modern world before you know we know that the concept of sustainability evolved with the human civilization but if you really look into the uh, the basic issues of sustainability it was more reflected more understand after industrial revolution after having oil crisis after having energy crisis so before the humans uh, the, the modern human we the post industrial uh, industrialized human understand uh, the, uh, the, uh, the concept of sustainability from in uh, holistic approach the ecologists know that and it, it is directly related to getting capacity of a system so basically we need to look into that that's why when you talk about the carrying capacity now we have to look into the carrying capacity of the world the planet the another is resource environment group in this you know uh, that is when we understand that in species level uh, the number of population is directly in ecology this in species level number of population is directly related to the availability of food and so is the available species they, sub, uh, they survive. So this is how sustainability come, the concept of sustainability is explained in, as in terms of carrying, carrying capacity in ecological term. So this is one of the route to understand the sustainability. The another is the resource environment. Route. When we know that uh, this carrying capacity of a particular system, so is the earth, the planet earth, is its own carrying capacity. So the concept, the root co concept of the resource environment root is the concept of capacity of earth versus the growing population. In some of its publication, uh, you will find out those details. We talk about this concept on the uh, uh, publication like the road to survival. And these are some of the publication and authors I'm here, our plunder planet, stallions of man's future, man's role in changing the face of the earth, limits to growth. This limits to growth is very famous. Uh, it's written by Meadows in 1972. Then the third one is the biosphere route. Here it talks about human activity versus degradation of environment. Human knowledge is advancing. And if you learn in the, uh, the, in the beginning of the our session, you know uh, that Concept of sustainability is, uh, is always human, but why it is come? We are degrading our environment without understanding our future potential or future probable, I mean, the, um, uh, the expected um, uh, that demand. So the biosphere route basically based on how much we are degrading the environment. This concept basically you will look into some of the publication like many nature or physical geography uh, by Mars, man in the earth, the increasing scale of man's role as an agent of global. This is some Alf Alfred Blodka in Element of Physical Biology, Kenneth Balding. The fourth one is critique of technology rule. You know, when the knowledge, human knowledge is advanced in the very first way, we started to utilize technology in developed country to use the uh, to utilize the resources in a very efficient way. So increasing the efficiency of resources means decreasing the waste product we use technology. So in that, we, a number of critics are there. What is the advantage and the limitation of technology? If you look in from efficiency point of view, okay, we agree. But if you look into Point of way we are extracting biotechnology, it has some disadvantages. So we need to look from that angle. So such kind of concept is expressed, reflected in the publication like the careless technology that is ecology interest and development by small is a beautiful economic is if people matter by E.F. Schumacher, agricultural sustainability in a changing world by Gordon Douglas in 1984. This is some of the publication. 
Number five, the five roots is the growth, uh, the no growth or slow growth root. Indeed, you will find out that human has no limitation accumulating their wealth. That is why we are degrading more wheat. But we understand that we are entirely dependent on your, our resources. And uh, if we do not, if we do not degrade the environment beyond its limit, we will be able to maintain the survivability by knowing that also without, uh, with the cost of improving our, uh, accumulating our wealth, we are destructing uh, our environment. So this no growth, slow growth model shows that wealth and accumulation of material position is, has become as a goal of society. So there is a need that at least we have to minimize the per capita consumption of resources. Growth should be stopped, limit up to some extent. We should not uh, go the growth beyond some line that reflected in this principle. So uh, some of the publication uh, that uh, focus on this principle, uh, the entropy law and economic process that was published in 1970, world dynamics, the limit to growth, models of doom towards steady state economy, Hermendali uh, is the pioneer in this field. If you look into modern concept of understanding the uh, um, uh, integrated approach, holistic approach of sustainability, he is one of the pioneer in this field, though he is from uh, ecological economic background. So energy parts uh, by Emory Lovitz, these are some of the publications. The, the common assumption under this no growth uh, and slow growth uh, model is that growth must stop at some time. Industrial countries should reduce per capita energy consumption. When we study about the different epochs, you will find out that the industrial countries, they are the first to face the issues of sustainability. Today, by understanding that also today, they are continuing their way of consumptive lifestyle that have direct impact to the broader context to the world. Because the issues of sustainability now is not local, no more local. It has become the, uh, the uh, environmental degradation, one place is a direct impact on direct impact in the global scale. And the significance of this particular no growth, uh, zero growth model is it is influential in crafting normative moral and ethical concept to the concept of sustainability, attention to long range problems, increase new ways of looking at the future, stimulate debate and increase examination of values. It's, this is also one of the important, uh, I mean, uh, roots of, of concept of sustainability, this eco-development route. The silent feature of eco-development, uh, this is this term is, uh, I mean, um, used by Sachs, uh, first proposed by Sachs in 1977. He defined eco-development and approach to development aim at harmonizing social and economic objective with ecological sound management in the spirit of solidarity with future generation. And point to be noted that uh, because of uh, his concept, introducing this concept we call development in 1970, United Nations Environmental Program, UNEF, uh, uh, have a publication basically based on sustainability of planet Earth. So few of the publication are eco-development, economics, ecology and development and alternative growth imperative by Robert Redelson. And there are many more publications. These are some of the publications like Blueprint for Survival. Uh, so the principal defect of the industrial way of life within this publication will find it's a source of expansions that it is not sustainable. A growing number of people are more interested in our proposal for creating a sustainable society than in yet another society. These are some of the important point which is reflected in those publications. 
then another publication of the international union for the conservation of nature sorry <laughs> In its 1972 yearbook, it is found that one of the first instances on the use of the word sustainable in the context of the environment. In that, conservation in the sense used by the IUCN means a management of the resources of the environment so as to achieve the highest sustainable quality of human life. Right? These are some of the. Then another. Uh, um, uh, this, Conferences happenings, Woodland conferences, and the Pride. Judge Mitchell, I will not go in tell you can read uh, later on the planning meetings of Woodland and the Woodland Prize. Now, does he has given prize um, to uh, selected people who works on sustainability, right? And uh, more. Then you know a number of UN conferences report, especially in um, seventies and eighties. In this way, the emerging ideas. Uh, then the word appears in the UN document uh, that's I mentioned the United Nations Environment Program in 1978 after uh, uh, Professor Satch uh, used the term that's a smability in one of his publications that influenced the UN uh, to use this word. But some of the non government entity, uh, the World Watch Institute, to have the publication did use the word sustainability. And they introduced, they started to use the word sustainable in their academic framework, in their publication, uh, building sustainable society. And State of the World 1984, the State of the World issue with the subtitle, A World Watch Report on Progress Toward a Sustainable Society. The World Resource Institute, Glo the Global Possible 1985 report, in that also concept of sustainability uh, was used. In India, the Indian Science Congress Association, in 1985, the team of annual meeting of the association was science and technology in environmental management, and the presidential address by Tian Kosu was entitled Environmental Priorities in India and Sustainable Development. There are a number of internet, independent international uh, study groups. There are a number of publications um, uh, that reflected the term sustainability and sustainable development. And after that, as you know, the World Commission of Environment Development, the first international effort that produced the report Our Common Future and uh, that introduced, legally introduced, technically introduced, economically introduced the term sustainable development. In that way, World Bank also they have. Now, when we have and understanding about the issues, the concept of sustainability. Now, the term, the another term is sustainable development is we mentioned that with the growing, the concept of um, sustainability is growing and it is as all age human civilization and a modern uh, uh, that way of understanding sustainability. The first it was introduced by the World Commission on Environment Development. The question comes in our mind, what to be sustained? For how long? And what has to be developed then? There's some limitation. And if you look into definition of World Commission on Environment Development Report, that is our current future, you will find out the development to meet the needs of the future generation without compromising the ability. Um, development to meet the need of the present generation without compromising the ability to meet the need of future generation as well, right? There are a number of critics on that standard definition, but we will have discussion that later on. The in that, the question comes, what to sustain for how long and what has to be developed? So we have to find out the answer of this question in our course. These three questions I'm um, putting in front of you, so at the end of the course, you have to answer yourself. As, my, as we know that a route to the concept of sustainable development was introduced, this is in the modern world, into the development discourse during 1970s. That started before 1970s, we have some publication like uh, Raquel Carson's publication, Silent Spring, and followed by UN Stockholm Conference, 
and and in that way i as i mentioned that logical term was introduced world commission on environment and development and if you look into we have a number of critics on that definition but the world commission on environment development report that was published in 87 entitled our confusion is an attempt of the international community to combine a growing concern about a race of in range of environment issues with socioeconomic the point is that before that, our concern of sustainability was going in a pragmatic way, in a piecemeal way. But we are trying to link the issues of that we used to be in a harmonious relation between environment and the human civilization, that is society, that limitation we realize. So that needs to be understood. So some of the latest publications, you know, up to the, uh, that uh, in 1970s, we'll find out more publication and action principle of population that talks about limit and that uh, limits to growth. You will find out gloom and the doom predicting their consequence of population explosion. Population explosion will have an unexpected impact that threatens to the sustainability of the resources. That was another leading, leading multinational Lester Brown. It's he also provided a warning of possible collapse global use of natural resources and environment. Then followed by its I mentioned WWI that uh, instead of the world uh, series. I will not go in this multinational product. Yeah, then some important, but in. You know, the Malthusian concept was uh, posited that reckless consumption would lead to serious detrimental consequences to the human population in the future. But Mr. Beshuru, she argued that increase in population pressure will inspire development of new technology to compensate for the increasing demand. This was the possible scenario. She argued that the increase in population leads to development that finally leads to a decline in the increase in population. Assumes on that, the we human will realize the limitation of the production capacity, the regenerative capacity of the nature, and automatically with, underst with that understanding that we will control our population. But unfortunately, we are evidence with geometric population growth, the enormously rapid depletion of resources, and finally, that the degradation of the environment. So and another American environmental, Paul Ericks, he also suggested that, she also, I call the PAT relation. We need to understand all this uh, uh, term. Impact is multiplicative, multiplicative way of population, P, affluence, A, and technology, T. In this way, you will be able to understand the impact of population on the resources. That directly reflected your consumption per capita and the way you are using the technology. So you have to understand which kind of technology has to be use what kind of lifestyle you have to follow and the number of your species means homo sapiens so it is observed that natural resources are finite the technology has limitation and population is increasing that's why was that uh, that uh, her argument was failed When we look into the term development, most of us think that development is a progress towards modernization with that of Western line or economic goal, growth towards GNP growth. Still, we are having that. But if you look into the way we are developing from the beginning of human civilization, development tax price progress take place, economic growth take place at the cost of the environment. And the term sustainability, if you look from 
when we are talking about different epoch, the term sustainability that breeds, that try to find out way for an alternative. Here in this modern world, after having evidence with a number of resource crises, energy crises, the term sustainability has become a term to bridge the gulf between this development environment so that the conflict of your space and time and development exists around the globe, right? It is a breeze, but you will see in space and time, the conflict is always exist. Today in India, especially in developing country and the countries who are looking towards the world power, even developed country has also doing the same. We know development have is in the cause of environment. We're still continuing. We have to understand that. So in another time, what we can say that the indifference with that development, one is your environment degradation. Other is what you will find out, the indifference in social equity, environment quality, economic development. It has become an output of development. If you look those social equity issues of social equity, environment quality, economic development, and many more. It may be either in inter intergenerational You just take a simple example in your family. What used to be with your grandfather, your father, your great grandfather, and with you, rich in a poor nation, look into a poor nation like African country, India, Asian countries, European countries, then if you look into local area again, rural and urban, you will find out the simple difference in this particular, in this pandemic, global pandemic COVID-19. So development needs to be balanced in all these dimension and this way, the concept of sustainable development evolves. So I'm sure till now you have an understanding on how the concept of sustainability was born with human civilization and how um, in the modern world we have, uh, I mean, passed on uh, different publication and others at last, we have introduced this term into an international publication into the um, and literary world, the legal world, as a standard term to understand the issues of sustainability, right? So as per the definition of WCED, World Commission on Environment Development and 87, it is defined as development to meet the needs of the present generation without compromising the ability of future generation to meet their own needs. This definition also some critics, some advantages and disadvantages, but point to be noted, noted that it is a water set in understanding the issues of sustainability in global, in a global common effort. So if you look into the, when we are understanding uh, the concept of sustainability, how the term sustainable development evolved, then you will find out different principles, the relation between nature and society through terms of when we talk about broad economy. So you can find out the basic principle of economics in different ways. Some of the basic principles are three pillar triangle basic model of sustainability, Cultural diversity as central pillars of sustainable development, the capitalist model, and the egg of sustainability models. If you need to, uh, I mean, break, let me know. Otherwise, I will continue. And uh, let us look into what are the basic principles under the three pillar basic model of sustainability and different models. Is it okay? Can I continue? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, it, will be, it will be a little bit longer because I'm trying to um, bring the concept in a systematic way. <clears throat> so in this edge, we know when uh, you have the understanding of the relation between harmonious relation, let us forget about issues of stability. The relation between human and nature is we depend on the nature for our inertia. And if you look into those inertia, we used to 
I mean, follow that energy, that medium into butter system, you will find out that we followed a butter system when it was in the beginning of our civilization. Now, it is, you know, it is used, we use economy as a medium. When in terms of monetary, that is economy. So the relations of maintaining, the relation of maintaining harmonious relation of nature society has to look into three pillars. One is, if there is no environment, society will not exist. It is a society to maintain the environment also. It is a nature to give the society. But how this relation is maintained? In which medium? Through the medium of economy. Because we are talking about development. When we talk about development, it is economic. Our growth is what? Economic growth. So these three pillar model, which is proposed by Segar Eldin in 1995, says that we have to maintain these three relation of three basic pillars of sustainable development, that is social environment and economy, right? These three pillars can look into three moral imperative. Why I'm bringing this into point of ethics again. One is satisfying human needs. That should not take it, take it the indefinite sat satisfaction you are trusting about. That is not bas satisfying basic human needs, right? That is the economy. Ensuring social equity should not be have an unequal society. All have should have equal access to resources. Then respecting environmental limit. So this three flag, these three models means satisfying human needs means economy gives you satisfaction of what is your basic needs. Ensuring social equity means social pillar. Respect environmental limits means environment and quality. So it can look from moral point of view, moral imperatives, these three pillars can be looked into in this way, in these three lens. Then another is culture. I will not look into the, uh, this slide. H how you have to understand culture as important pillar of sustainability. If you look into how the issues of sustainability, the relation between nature and society has become a degradation of, we are not in following the harmless way. It's because of our culture, right? We started what culture? We, we are in Neolithic age, we are in hunter-gatherer, followed by agriculture and followed by industrial era. We follow a different way of consumptive lifestyle. No, still, we are having different culture. It is a culture that destroys your nature, that gives you imbalances, nature, society, and environment, um, and the relation. And it is, and if you look into another side, there is one side is how we are degrading, another side, how we are maintaining, like the country like India, in, even in most of the Asian country. It is the culture that maintains the sustainability of your environment. Our dying wisdom, that is the culture or belief that maintain your sustainability. So we need to understand culture as the fourth pillar of sustainable development. Okay? That is why here in this culture should be viewed not just not just as an additional pillar for sustainable development, along with environment and economic social objective, because people's identify identities, signifying systems, cosmologies, and epistemic framework shape how the environment is viewed and lived in. Culture shapes what we mean by development, it determines how people act in the world. It is a culture to maintain everything, to change everything, to distribute everything on the same way, on the other way, it is a culture to maintain harmonious relation. So you will see, if you tag the culture in the center of the pillar, you will see in this diagram, social justice, empowerment, participation, social mobility, social cohesion, institutional development. Is a part of culture. Cultural identity is very important in balancing 
your nature society relation. Self-reliance, to bring your self-reliance, to bring you ecological balance, right? The other is capital stock model. This capital stock model talk about this proposal. <laughs> So ecological capital talks about ecological capital. What is what are ecological capital? You know, biodiversity land. What people you have seen in the environment? The other is human social capital. See. These three important pillars we are discussing from the beginning, but different organization and different authors, they, I mean, define in different way. And here, well then what they're doing? Human social capital that equates to health, social security, social cohesion, freedom, justice, equality, opportunity, and peace. So they propose the model is capital stock of sustainable development is what? It's a summation of your environmental value. Capital stock of your economy, capital stock of the society. If you look into this, you know, if your capital stock of the environment is not high and your capital stock of the economy is high and the capital stock of the society is high, you can say that capital stock is high. So you will find out what is the limitation of this particular model. You can have degraded environment. So this is the limitation. The another that is proposed by IUCN Act of Sustainability. Now, when it proposes IUCN way of understanding is uh, the relation between the nature and the people means society. Here they use the term people, society is people, and nature is ecosystem. It has a flaw. Like albumin and York relation in the act. So it illustrates the relationship between people and ecosystem, one circle inside other, like the Zolf of an E. So that shows this diagram also shows that there, when your health of the uh, environment is good, then you will be well protected. And if the society is also good, then your quality of environment will be good. So social and economic development can only take place if the environment offers the necessary resources, raw material, space for new production, side jobs, and constitutional qualities. So ecosystem is therefore to be regarded as a superordinated system to the other dimension of the triangle of pressure model, social economic institutional model. This latter can only prosper if they adapt themselves to the limits of environment carrying capacity. That's why. IUCN hypothesis is sustainable development called the human well-being plus ecosystem well-being. So in short, you will find out during the past few years, especially we're talking about post Brunland area, a number of exercises are being implemented by different environmental, uh, governmental, non-government organization towards sustainable development. Through the reformation of national policies, you will find out Institutions, how UNEP was started, and then every every uh, state, uh, every nation, how they are uh, different. Uh, I mean, uh, department uh, they established by strengthening the capacity of environment bureaucracy. Even in India, also we have NZT, and then forest service and other directing much greater level all uh, levels of funding. Moreover, involving the international environment agreements organized in the post. 1972, you will find out number of environmental agreements, number of uh, international organizations are growing. So green in the room, uh, but green industry, if you look into that green industry revolution like green technology, uh, that is bad technology from Rio Art Summit, uh, these are some of the, I mean, uh, uh, product of post Stockholm or post Brunland Commission. And uh, Unfortunately, those 
uh, the uh, progress have some limitation. That's why we need to work together. We need to understand in the present context. Now, let us have a quick look into what is the fundamental issues in that. Once in 2001, Kofi Annan said, United Nations General Secretary, our biggest selling in this century is to take an India that sounds abstract sustainable development. We're talking about sustainable development. But turn it into reality for all the world's people. It's the biggest challenge. We know the concept. We know the approach. But taking it into reality is the biggest challenge. And we're still fashioning. That's why today, when we are facing this global pandemic, we're taking so much time to fight with. As you know, environment sustainability involves harmonious relationship between action of human society and environment itself. Once it was an only extraction of resources, now we're talking about the way we are degrading. So it cannot be possible. We can say, okay, we are uh, I mean, enhancing or optimizing environment quality, air quality, improving water quality. Not only that we do, we need to understand that in holistic approach, only the improving environment quality will not work. We need to understand social contacts. As I talk, as we talk, we learn that social equity is important because inequality, social inequality and others issues are the product of the process of development. So if you want to maintain the harmonious relation, you have to maintain, you have to understand development from a holistic approach. You have to understand the issues of sustainability from a holistic approach, not in piecemeal. That's why there is a need for sustainable science education. Another challenge is to enable elements of sustainable far-sighted strategy. Is we know that the number of conventions they have recommended number of things. Those far-sighted strategies recommended by different institution, organization, government needs to be far-sighted thinking convert into far-sighted thinking and actions. To convert in that into far-sighted thinking and action, the challenge is in front of each, in front of each of us. Us is that pure impatience, selfishness, uncertainty, limited analytical capacity, vulnerability as an obstacles. These are the obstacles in front of us. We are very impatient. You may have a bad selfishness at different level. You think for yourself, you think for your family, you think for your society, means your community only. That's why we do not have some time we have fight between one community to uh, with another community. You're thinking for your own, I mean, a nation only, own state only. The uncertainty, we are looking for short term benefit only. We are looking, we are not. We sometimes uh, avoid the long-term benefit. We have limited analytical capacity. We think only as it is like uncertainty. We have distant benefit we do not look into. Vulnerability we think, okay, what will happen in 10 years? Forget about it. Let us enjoy my life in these two years. That's, that is obstacle. Therefore, without understanding Individuals commitment. That's reflect that in this visual commitment, motivation goals require. Otherwise, it will be difficult to move forward towards the human dream of sustainability. So the crystal challenge in front of us is either to get most of the people to the world thinking about sustainability or to stimulate inform policy that creates structural solution so that sustainability itself may be advanced while people march mindlessly throughout their days. So the gap in the knowledge in the human psychological understanding can be bridged through the mass education. That's why United Nations global common efforts, they understand that it can have UN declared 2004 to 2015 UN decade of education for sustainable development. Whether we accept it or not, it is up to you. You have to answer at the completion of this course. Big question to you. Let us look into what some of the big, um, I mean, uh, stalwarts, what say. 
like in India, like Father of Green Revolution, who is the, I mean, uh, who develops sustainable science in India, Professor M. A. Schwaminathan defined the foundation upon which sustainable development can be achieved. In his work, there is a need for a harmony with nature, which is non-negotiable it takes. It's a well focus, a well focus to the five is ecology, economy, energy, employment, equity. That's why I told you, I told you that then because of development, you are giving, we are uh, bringing a product called inequity, unequal world. So we need to understand this. So the roots of sustainable development should be pro nature, pro poor, pro woman orientation. What Dr. Karan said. You opine that the concept of sustainable development is only something that is invented in the West. That is what we are talking about. When we talk about sustainability, we talk about following the Western concept. And we in the East really knew nothing about it. It's entirely wrong. They exist in our cultural heritage. And it shows quite clearly how important environmentalism are it was. You just look into our tradition and custom, you will find out that. Don't feel that sustainability come, the concept of sustainability comes from the Western world, come from the UN. Don't think that sustainable development term is a new term. That's all you know it all. So he stresses us that sustainable development involves transformation of our own individual and collective behavior. Although environmental values are built in our ethos, we are not behaving in according accordance with those environmental values. And in fact, we seem to be behaving in exact opposite direction of what our cultural tools was us. That's why we need to look, culture is one of the important pillars. So in that way, after first trial, we have uh, that post uh, Brunlang, we have that global common effort, one of the important common effort is Rio Summit. It has Agenda 21 program that was followed by Johan Box 2002. And uh, we have UN Decade of Education for Sustainable Development in 2002, 2000. Uh, pre uh, this uh, 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 Rio Plus 10, we, uh, we have, we implement Millennium Development Goal to achieve uh, eight goals from 2000 to 2015, then followed by sustainable development. In this uh, decade, we are having uh, that uh, achieving SDGs by 2030.